this video, I want to take a look in more detail at the scrotum. Now, we talked about the scrotum earlier at the beginning of this series of videos. We only covered it so that we knew what the structure was that held the primary sex organs. Now, we're going to take a look at the scrotum in more detail. Also, like we said at the beginning of the series, half of our videos are released free on YouTube. The other half and all the rest of the videos are available exclusively at MrFordsClass.net. This is our last free video on the male reproductive system. So if you want to get more information, be sure to check out our website for the rest of the series as well as lecture notes. So let's get going and talking about the scrotum. The scrotum is an outpouching of skin, muscle, and connective tissue like we said earlier. It has a thin layer of wrinkled pigmented skin, the dartos fascia, which is a layer of connective tissue and smooth muscle fiber, as well as a tunica vaginalis, which is a closed sac that allows the movement of the testes. Within the scrotum, like we said earlier, are the testes as well as supporting structures. The skin of the scrotum contains sebaceous glands. If you want to know more about sebaceous glands, be sure to check out our glands portion on the integumentary system. Sparse hair and lots of sensory nerves. You can feel a lot there. It is divided into the right and left compartments by an internal median septum. The septum is marked externally, so you can see where the septum is, by a seam known as the perennial raphi and this will extend from the ventral side of the penis to the far margin of the anus. Sperm itself is very temperamental. It's very uh, delicate as far as the temperatures that it can stand as far as being viable. So the scrotum is equipped with certain structures to keep the temperature constant for the production of sperm. Sperm has to be around 35 degrees centigrade in order to remain viable. It's going to use the following structures in order to help remain viable. It's going to use the cremaster muscle, the dartos muscle, and something known as the paniform plexus. The cremaster muscle will contract when cold. This contraction will raise the testes closer to the body. Now keep in mind the body has a specific temperature, it has a core temperature. So by raising the testes up, by, by pulling the scrotum up and raising the testes, it's bringing it closer to the body, thus warming them up. When it's warm, the muscle will relax, allowing the scrotum to descend and thus the testes to go down with them. The dartos muscle, when contracted, will cause the scrotum to become taunt and wrinkled. This will hold the testes close to the body as well as reduce surface area. The last structure we need to be aware of is the pampiniform plexus. Now it's not muscles like the last two. It's a network of veins from the testes that surrounds the testicular artery. This causes the blood to be cooler in the testicle area, in the scrotum, than the rest of the body. So we have two muscles that will contract and will bring the testes up, will shrink up the scrotum itself, and then of course we have the pampiniform plexus, which is a series of blood vessels that surround the testes, which actually lowers the temperature that the normal blood in the body would have. All right, in our next video, we're going to take a look at the accessory glands of the male reproductive tract.